Cycle Solutions is your one-stop shop for upgrades and service. Cycle Solutions, Fort Myers, and CycleSolutions.com. Taking your bike from the street to the strip. Hello, this is Chris Waddell from Cycle Solutions. Coming to you from balmy Fort Myers Beach, Florida. We're in the shop today. This is a, or was a, absolutely destroyed 103-inch um, motor. It's kind of a hybrid. It's got the old-style cases. It's actually have an 04 chassis, and what we've done is we've redone the crank. It's got a balanced welded crank. Dark Horse did the work for us there. We did the Timken bearings in it. Uh, because the crank is absolutely dead straight, we were able to go ahead and use a gear drive cam, which I prefer. Zippers cuts me a 657 lift cam, specifically for the s, &S gear sets. It makes a ton of torque and a ton of power. Uh, in this particular case, this was a CBO 110 top end. And what we did is we took it, uh, we bored it out, uh, we clearance the cases so that the sleeves on the bottom um, or the spigots would go down in the case. And then we took a set of the CBO heads and we did a stage 3 plus port polish job. Gigantic valves, huge porting and polishing. Um, this thing's going to rock as a 113. Now, one of the purposes of this video is to talk about our billet rocker stands, SNS forged roller rockers, our billet breathers, and how all this stuff works. Um, so if we bring the camera over here, we can actually see some stuff. I'm going to point some things out. So this is our billet rocker stand. This is our billet breather. This is a set of forged s, &S roller rockers. And in this particular case, in the rear cylinder, I've already got the push rods in and adjusted. So everything in here is nice. It's tight, but it moves freely. So using this as an example, there's no place side to side, but up and down, it's like a Rolex. Nothing side to side, up and down is a Rolex. I want to explain how these breathers work and why it's so important to have proper stuff. So this is a factory part for your 06 and up style uh, head breathers. They have a rubber flapper in it and then there's a pair of gaskets. The round one goes on the top. This one holds the actual filter in, seals the bottom. Okay? And it's got the inlets and the outlet. So what happens inside of here is when the pistons go down, pressure grows, it travels up the pushrod tubes into the rocker box, the pressure vents into here, comes into the breather top body, okay, and then lifts the flapper, enters the actual top of it, and then goes down through a hole here, travels across the galleyway, and comes out. So quite honestly, the way we test them when we put them together is we'll put our mouth right here, or a hose, and we'll blow in as hard as we can. You can also use a you know small pressure gauge where you can positively pump pressure in. So it should hold pressure and build, or you can't blow in. But when you breathe out, and you do this carefully, uh, I've had a mouthful of hook you know, go right down my, <coughs> my mouth. Um, this should go out freely. So inside of here, that's what I'm talking about. One of the things about our breather, the rocker stands, they work so well is here's where the air enters, the pressure goes up and in. And this sits here like so. So it crosses over this right here, goes into this area, which incidentally, these are the drain back holes. They're quite a lot larger than a stock piece. So any oil that coagulates in there, gets stuck in the filter, will fall down these holes, okay? Pressure goes up through, the flapper opens, losing its seal, if you will, enters this portion of the breather, which is setting like so, and then it goes down the drain, this hole, which has a galleyway, comes over here, and it goes out. It's pretty simple in its design. These are significantly stronger than the stamped little pieces of steel. They look tricker. It all sits together, sits down in there like that. Now, when you install the roller rockers and you install these billet stands, our billet stands don't change the um, geometry inside here. It all bolts together, it all goes right. Incidentally, when we do this, we do use new chromoly pins from s, s But when all this is installed and set correctly, one thing that you have to do is you have to remove some webbing. So it's basically here. And if you really want to, you can get wild and crazy, and you can get over here. But the bottom line is once you put the lid back on, you need to make certain it's clearanced right there. And this motor will turn over even if it's bumping it. But what it does do, if this is pushing down on that, it won't allow the motor to make 
compression. And then you'll be scratching your knob and trying to figure out why you can't get it to start. And the reason I tell you that's because the first time I ever put a set of these in a motor, I had no compression. I pulled my hair out trying to figure out what I'd done wrong, and that is exactly what I did wrong. You just got to clean the webbing out. Now there's some aftermarket rocker boxes that completely eliminate that problem. So they're already clearance, no webbing there, so they just bolt in. But a, a factory Harley uh, rocker box, you're going to have to clearance it. Something else to point out when you're doing big valves like this, you have to go up in the top corners. In most cases, these rocker boxes are from an 04 that are going on here. So we had to go out in with the Dremel and clean the whole corner so that the top of the valve spring could clearance and wouldn't touch. Otherwise, you got a big problem there. So this is a pretty trick piece of hardware, this motor, hybrid for sure. Uh, it'll make a ton of power. In this case, we're going to use a DND um, Fat Cat. He wants mid-range and torque, but it'll make power all the way to 6,500 RPM all day long. Things that we're going to do with this particular bike, we're going to be running a max flow 58 millimeter horsepower in throttle body. Um, about as big as we can put on here. They're port matched. This is an important point to, to note. These are set at 1.81. So when people come in or call in and want to order a throttle body, they'll ask. So the measurement that we need when you're ordering one of our throttle bodies or a horsepower ink throttle body is the distance from right here to here. Okay? So we have different port sizes on the intake plenums, both throttle by wire and uh, Delphi style. We need to know what this is. So you want the two pieces to match perfectly. So in, through, down, bang, and out, and you go. So check us out on CycleSolutions.com. All these parts are available. You can always reach out to me, um, and I can help you if you want to put together a performance build. And if you want it done here or in our Indiana shop, we can do it as well. Thanks for tuning in. If you want to be notified when new videos from Cycle Solutions are released, hit the like and subscribe button to follow us.